Welcome to Telab's Optical LAN 1150E OLT installation, part two. In this video, we will demonstrate card installation and turn up of the system. What we're going to do is begin uh, installing our circuit cards into the 1150E shell. The first thing you want to make sure before you touch any circuit cards is that you're properly grounded uh, to the shelf using a wrist strap. The 1150E requires the ESU2 they'll be installed in the, the center two slots. Now the primary ESU will go in first. Typically we put this in slot A. What we're going to do is install the card, make sure that it powers up. The LEDs are going to go through power-up diagnostics, which means it's going to be red for about 30 seconds. Uh, then it's going to blink slow, showing that it's going through its initialization phase. Uh, once it's through its initialization, the card will come up and it'll be ready for us to turn up. The next thing we're going to do is start the turn up procedure. In order to do this, we need to have a serial cable connection for local login into the ESU card. Uh, to do this, we need a male to female 9 pin cable. It's a straight through cable without a null modem. Okay, for serial communication, our COM port is set at 38400 baud. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to type in our username and password. Now, the default username and password on a on a brand new card is going to be admin and the uh, tell labs. Okay, in a factory fresh card, you'll begin uh, with the menu. In the menu, the turn up maintenance procedure is number eight. Once you get into the turn up procedure, you'll want to start with the turn up, which is number two. Again, it always ask if you want to proceed and it lets you know if something is going to be service affecting. Since this is a brand new shell, uh, we're not going to be affecting service. The first thing it wants to know is if you're going to be using IP version four, IP version six, or both as far as the management IP address structure is concerned. For our purposes, we're going to be using uh, IP version 4. And then it wants to know what the IP address is for this particular shelf. So in our case, uh, we're going to go with 172.23.71.89. Then it wants to know what the net mask is. In our case, 255, 255, 255, 0. And then your gateway address. The next thing it's going to ask you is about uh, the bridging mode. Here, you can use 8021Q for a single layer VLAN, or for provider purposes, you can use 8021AD which will give you a Q&Q application. Then it asks you what your management VLAN is going to be. All management has to have some sort of a VLAN attached to it. And so in our case, we're going to set up ours at VLAN 2. Each VLAN will require a priority, 0 being the lowest, 7 being the highest. For management, we're going to use a high priority. You'll look at the IP addresses that you've put here. It asks you if there's any changes. If, you're, if all of these parameters are adequately set, we'll say no to continue the process. Then ask, will this any have one or more uplink interfaces? In the enterprise environment, we'll always have an uplink interface, so the answer to this question is going to be yes. The next question it asks is for a port VLAN ID. The port VLAN ID uh, would be a, a specific VLAN that we would like to strip if, for instance, we wanted to take uh, our VLAN 2 for management and then uh, make it 
untagged for management once it leaves the shell. In this case, if I don't want to untag anything, uh, I'm going to use a VLAN ID of 1 and a priority of 0 to let it know that I don't want to untag anything. Then it wants to know what my, uh, my uplink is going to be like. Here, I'm going to use a 2 gig lag starting with just port 1 on each card. So it's going to ask me about each port. I'm going to say yes to port 1 on the, on the A card and then no to the rest of the ports on that card and then yes to port 1 on the B card. This will give me a 2 gig lag for the card. If you're using LACP, this is where you would enable that. In our case, we're not using it. To, for management VLAN, on the uplink interface net one, this lets me map where management's going to occur. So in this case, this two gig lag is going to be the only uplink I'm going to use, and I'm going to say yes uh, to the management VLAN on that uplink. And ask if I want to make any changes. It lets me know what parameters I've set, and I'll say no to the changes. Are there other uplinks? You can make multiple uplinks on the system. I'm going to say no. It'll also ask me about ring interfaces and transport interfaces. In an enterprise environment, we typically don't use these. Again, it'll show me cumulatively all of the parameters that I've just set for this. And again, it'll ask me if I want to make any changes. My answer is going to be no. Then it asks me, do I want to perform the turn up? I'll say yes. Again, it warns me that this is going to be service affecting. And it asks me if I want to erase the database. In a new system, uh, the database is typically empty, but it's usually prudent to go ahead and say yes. Also ask me if I want to erase SSL certificates. At this point, the card will then reboot. Once the card is finished rebooting, it'll be ready for us to install the rest of the cards. Through turning up this card, you'll notice that the LEDs have gone solid green, so now we're ready to go ahead and install the rest of our cards. The next card we're going to install is going to be the secondary ESU card. The secondary card and all subsequent cards will receive a software download from this primary card. So whatever software is on the primary card will then be transferred to these cards as well. For your uh, GPON cards, you want to remove the dummy card, and then install them in the proper slots. Okay, now that the secondary card has come up, it's through initializing, and it's taken a a download from the primary card. You see this is the primary card, this is the secondary card. Uh, we're going to now uh, connect our uplink to the network. So we provisioned in a 2 gig lag using port 1 on each card. So we're going to install an SFP in port 1 of each card. And then we're going to take our, our, our two connectors and connect them to this. Now all of your fiber connectors will go down to the fiber trough at the bottom and then they'll be routed out the left and the right hand side of the shelf. This will allow you to be able to close the shelf uh, without uh, crimping or pinching any of your uh, fibers. All right, the last thing you'll want to do uh, to complete the installation is to verify that you have uh, network con connectivity uh, from our uh, 1150E shelf to the panorama server so that we'll be able to provision the system. So uh, once we've logged back into this, um, from the chicken lips here, we'll go uh, ping and we'll put in our server address. The positive indication means that we'll be able to provision this into the server.